What a series. An amazing display of execution, basketball IQ, and the ultimate coaching chess match between Brad Stevens and Nick Nurse. These two teams played at an elite level for seven games and handled all the adjustments, counters, and everything they threw at each other. In this film room breakdown, we're going to look at the adjustments and how the series unfolded, culminating with a 4-3 Celtic series win. My name is Coach Gibson Piper. You can follow me on Twitter at Half Court Hoops. If you want more detailed and extended breakdowns of these videos, I have a Coach's Cut Patreon alternative link below. I want to talk about the adjustments, some minor, some major. For instance, a minor example would be a switch off the ball. A major one would be a matchup or scheme change, like switching completely or player matchups. It is also important to keep in mind that we may give credit or blame to the head coaches, and a lot of behind the scenes work from both coaching staffs and on court player adjustments from some of the smartest players on the planet go into all of this. So let's dive into the game film from game one. The starting lineups for the Celtics was Kemba, Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Daniel Tice, the same as has been in the 76er series when Hayward went out, and the Raptors was Lowry, Van Vliet, OG Inanobi. Pascal Siakam, and Marcus All. The matchups for guarding each other were Lowry on Tatum, Van Vliet on Kemba, OG on Smart, Siakam on Brown, Gasol on, on Tice, and that is the same the other way, where Tatum guarded Lowry, Kemba, Van Vliet, Smart, OG, Brown, Siakam, and Tice on Gasol. With all the switching, some of the counter stuff that's going on, it's not too important, but it is important to note, especially for the first game, because the Celtics used a lot of verticality and length on like Lowry and Van Vliet when they were attacking the basket. And that caused a lot of problems on the drives and didn't allow Lowry and Van Vliet to finish easily at the rim. The Celtics ball screen defense is ice or pushing everything to the sideline. The whole goal is to keep the ball away from the ball screen and not allow the player to use it and push the ball to the sideline. A way to counter that is to have your big be above or pick and pop which Serge Ibaka and Marc Gasol are both pretty good shooters. Gasol didn't have a shot working a lot this series, but Ibaka really hurt the Celtics' ball screen coverage because of his ability to pick and pop and then also attack closeouts off the pick and pop. Williams being a little bit undisciplined, you kind of see he gets out of position at times. The pick and pop really hurt the Celtics in the first game with Ibaka hitting three pick and pop threes on them. An interesting thing was seeing how the Celtics chose to close out to Ibaka and Gasol and even Siakam. You can see short closeouts or closeouts to non-shooter, uh, basically allowing them to take open threes. And they weren't really concerned about you know contesting those shots unless those players get in a rhythm, which we'll see that adjustment come down in further games. But you can see even hit Siakam here, Jalen Brown with a shorter closeout, allowing him to shoot that three. One of the ways the Celtics disrupted the Raptors' half-court offense, which is already struggling, is by switching, especially one through four, uh, on any sort of ball screen action, pin down action, off ball action. While this whole play is happening, after the initial switch, we'll see on the weak side here, they'll get a switch back with Semi switching onto Ibaka, Wanamaker taking Siakam. So they do off ball switching as well, which we'll break down after this. Tice jumps out here, switches onto Lowry, and forces the turnover. They'll switch like for like, but sometimes they'll switch bigs onto guards. Uh, so in this scenario here, we see a little handoff and Williams gets switched onto Van Vliet. Williams has been a little bit undisciplined in this series, but he does a good job here keeping a high hand and forcing a tough shot from Van Vliet there. The like for like here, we can see Kemba switches onto Lowry. This blows up their flare set, Gasol setting an illegal screen here. They'll also switch Kemba onto like OG. Uh, who's not a great post-up player, and they kind of want him to post up if that's what they're going to go to, kind of disrupts the flow of their offense. We see S uh, Smart and Brown here are going to switch this Van Vliet-Siakam pin down. So now we get Smart on Siakam, Brown on Van Vliet. Siakam tries to ISO, Brown just ends up missing an easy layup. One of the things that the Celtics defense does at an elite level that really reminds me of those Warriors defensive teams is how they switch off the ball. So here we see Van Vliet's going to reject the ball screen, putting a defense at a disadvantage. Kemba's going to jump and take his drive. Tatum's going to switch onto Lowry, his man. And now their defense is set with Kemba on Van Vliet and Lowry being guarded by Tatum. Also, if Kemba gets in a switch or like a, a bad situation, a disadvantage, like in this scenario, we're going to see them do a little ice ball screen coverage here and then go into a drop to switch. So Williams is going to take Van Vliet. Kemba is going to veer back and take Ibaka, the pick and pop shooting threat. 
So that's clearly an advantage for the Raptors right now. We're going to get a triple switch from the Celtics with Wanamaker and Kemba switching, and then Brown and Wanamaker switching. So basically, Kemba is going to be on OG, Brown takes Powell, and then Wanamaker's on Ibaka in the post. Now, the opening play of the game, the Raptors went to their uh, pistol set. So this is pistol and a strong handoff. They get the first option here, and we looked at that verticality. Uh, from on Van Vliet there. Here's a stagger screen or that strong screen with Lowry coming off of it. The first time he comes off and shoots kind of a tough contested shot, good contest by Tatum there. The next time he knows that Tatum's going to be trailing him, so he sprints off it, turns the corner, gets downhill, beats Tice for an easy layup. The Raptors started the fourth quarter with this action as well. Lowry comes off the dribble handoff, beats Tice, draws the foul, converts it for the and one. The Raptors run what I call Boston action, which is a stagger screen with the first player curling into the lane and the second player coming off the screen. The Celtics in this scenario do not switch. So you can see Wanamaker stays on Van Vliet. Tatum stays attached to Davis. Van Vliet comes off a screen from Ibaka. This actually allows Van Vliet to get a pretty good look from three, and we'll see how the Celtics adjust to this in the future games. One of the things that really hurt the Raptors in game one was Kemba Walker and his ability to not only score off the ball screen, but create in ball screen situations as well. He ended up with 18 points and 10 assists, which is an incredible stat line for a player of his magnitude in his first real big time playoff series. Uh, his ability to draw two and kind of dish or find bigs or find the role man, find shooters was really impressive to me. And clearly something that I noticed, and in my notes, I actually put wreaking havoc because that's what he did. He just basically kind of controlled the game from an offensive standpoint and did whatever he wanted to do on the court. Now, the Raptors made some adjustments in game one. Game ones are more of a feeling process. They tried to switch Ibaka starting the fourth quarter on Akemba, and uh, it, it did not go well. Uh, Kemba was able to attack him pretty easily and kick and find shooters. Uh, he's able to get off the bounce, and I think they only switched for two straight possessions until Kemba kind of made them realize that Ibaka is not fit to guard him one-on-one. -on -one. one of the most important sequences of Game 1 was when the Raptors were in their two-big lineup at the end of the second quarter, so end of the half. They posted up Ibaka versus Jalen Brown. He tried to kick it out. Tatum stole the ball, ended up leading to an easy dunk, so that put the Celtics up 14. Coming back down, they tried to put Williams in ball screen coverage, but he was able to recover and contest a pretty tough layup. And with the two big lineup, the Celtics attacked both bigs, Ibaka and Gasol, put them in ball screen coverage. Kemba came off the ball screen, nothing really was open, he found smart, but since bigs are used to recovering to the paint so often, Kemba was able to relocate and knock down an open three that was a huge five point swing. It's always fun as a coach to kind of watch these games and look for subtle things that I think might be open in the future. And I'll write down, you know, possible after timeouts or examples that might be open. Here, Tice was open on the slip just for a second. Uh, you know, they, they didn't, weren't able to capitalize off of it, end up flowing into a pretty bad brown kind of pull up, uh, missed shot. And then another example in, in, you know, a couple possessions later where, you know, Tice looks for the slip. They might be looking for him, but, you know, not, not an in-game adjustment and maybe something that will come up later, uh, you know, in the series and the breakdown, but a good thing to kind of note as you're going through some of these game films. The Boston Celtics run this 11 ball screen or a double ball screen for Kemba Walker, usually with a guard setting the first ball screen, the big setting the second ball screen. The normal way that the Raptors guard this is to switch that first ball screen and then force Kemba to use a second ball screen as a spread ball screen and contest. Here's a good example of the basically back-to-back -back plays. Good contest by Van Vliet both times, but two different results You know, coming off this ball screen. This time Brown makes the three instead of Smart missing the three. So you can guard it the same way. It might not matter. Uh, but they generally would do this to kind of prevent a turn the corner and turn it back into a spread ball screen, preventing Kemba from getting downhill or attacking one-on-one -on -one and trying to keep some length on him as well. I want to show a little bit of examples of the Raptors and how they help on drives, so especially at the nail. So you'll see the player guarding the, the player in the wing or the slot in the nail over help or help in the lane and prevent any easy scoring opportunities. 
baseline drives, same thing. You'll see them over help at the rim and basically allow corner threes. That's kind of their, their they let the uh, NBA and corner threes allowed. So they're going to basically load up at the rim, load up in the paint, and help on any drives. And it's important to notice this because of some of the driving kick opportunities that open for the Celtics and some of the adjustments made later in the series uh, based on how the Raptors defense is set up to operate, uh, especially when they do, do different things like box and one and triangle and two and things like that. Another staple of their defense is ball pressure, not only from the guards like Van Vliet and Lowry who are extremely feisty on ball defenders, but also the bigs when the Celtics bigs are handling it. Um, just an overall amount of ball pressure and pressure on the offense, trying to disrupt, trying to create you know, some steals, some transition opportunities. Their half-court offense obviously was not the best, ranking 18th, but they had the best transition offense. So putting pressure on the ball and creating easier stealing opportunities is a great way to, you know, kind of create your offense and get your offense going. And that is a lot of pressure on the ball and just being active. Now, game one, like I said, was more about a feeling out process. The Raptors go to their 2-3 zone, or almost like a 2-1-2 zone. In game one, they primarily had Gasol or Ibaka, the big man, in the middle, either low or high, depending on what alignment was the offense was in. But generally speaking, they would have their big either at the nail or low. Uh, no specials were run from the Celtics against the zone. It was just kind of like ball screens and, and, and basic you know, basic actions against it. Here we see Gasol taking the high post when the high post flash occurs. Um, so they kind of just had a basic zone offense, 1-3-1, one, one, you know, ball screen it, try to attack. Got clean looks, but ended up just missing them. 11 zone possessions, uh, 6 points and 4 turnovers. So not a good zone offensive action from the uh, Celtics in Game 1. And we'll see how that kind of evolves down the line through the Game 7. One huge note that I made note of, as, as well as others made a, made a point to talk about this, was there was no Siakam and guard ball screen in game one, uh, which was really, really interesting because it's one of the most effective actions they've ran all year, um, especially with Kemba Walker you know, being the main defensive liability for the Celtics. They did not run one of those ball screen actions one time. Game two is where a lot of teams make the majority of the adjustments uh, coming from game one and then you know the tweaking comes from there. Let's dive into the game from game two. We saw the pistol strong handoff action give the Celtics some problems. Uh, I want to show this clip and there is audio that might be a little bit louder uh, talking about the Celtics coaching staff adjusting to it. Three turnovers for Marcus Smart hasn't been as impactful on the offensive end as he was in game one. Celtics have seven points in the quarter. So you could hear them there calling out their call probably for a blitz or you know a trap of that action. Uh, Tice jumping out really thwarted that action. The mistake here from Williams is he wasn't ready for that set and allowed Lowry to turn the corner and finish with the layup. When they went to this action again in the fourth quarter, here we see Tatum is above switching onto Lowry, going underneath, and Lowry ends up throwing the ball out of bounds. I want to show this baseline bounds uh, stagger set or strong action that the Celtics do a pretty good job of defending here because it'll come up later where it's a key moment where they don't defend it very well. One of the things that was noticeable in game two was Ibaka's ability to exploit the ice or drop ball screen defense from the Celtics as well as you pick and pop but as well as roll, be a spot up shooter uh, and just basically impact the game positively forcing the bigs to have to recover to him a little bit higher. Uh, and I noticed he just did a much better job of finishing around the rim, something that we had to look forward to, you know, adjustment for games three and four. Siakam struggled this series. Uh, Nick Nurse tried a lot of different things to get him going. He received that strong Boston action. Uh, they're going to get a pass to Van Vliet. And then as soon as Siakam gives the ball up, Brown kind of stands up straight. So they're going to kick it right back to him for a designed ISO to get downhill. He ends up driving Brown. Brown does a great job recovering and up blocking the shot. Coming out of a timeout, the Celtics go to their hook uh, into a ball screen, so they keep it and throw it into a ball screen. Van Vliet on this ball screen is going to notice that Smart is on a Baca, and then he's going to say, wait a second, that's not right. Flip it over to OG, who has Williams on him. They designed this by basically putting Smart in ball screen defense. OG is able to drive Williams and get an easy layup. Great recognition by Fred Van Vliet there. Game one, they didn't run this guard ball screen action for Siakam one time. Game two, they ran it 11 times. I'm also including a clip of the game two breakdown I had emptying one side of the floor. This clip right here is my favorite example of why Nick Nurse is awesome. As we see the coach of the year graphic on the screen and Nurse organizing and telling players where to go. 
Since the Celtics and Kemba Walker would hedge and recover the ball screen, the Raptors went to that same ball screen for Siakam with the entire side of the floor empty, allowing Fred Van Vliet to be wide open on a pick and pop make three. Just a great play design and a great adjustment. Now the next possession, they ran this action again. The adjustment here was Kemba denied Van Vliet to be able to go set the ball screen or jammed it. So if he jams it, it doesn't allow the ball screen to be set towards that side of the floor. They ran a little two-man game. Van Vliet misses a deep three. Great adjustment by the Celtics. The Raptors had a lot of success in game two, running their horns flex into a Chicago action. So this basic flex screen with Lowry setting like a back screen almost here on Brown. OG gets open for an easy open layup. And it's not like normal flex action where it's continuity. The way the Raptors do it is they have the flex action go right into a pin down into a dribble handoff, which is what I call Chicago action. So this dribble handoff here from Gasol and Lowry. Now Gasol is going to roll to the basket. Lowry finds OG on the shake read. Tatum closes out. OG ends up making the open three. They also ran this action where the Celtics tried to switch it. So you can see them setting that screen now. Then Tice switches out onto Lowry. Lowry ends up backing up, driving downhill, blows by Tice for the layup. Another action that we didn't see in game one, but the Raptors found success with was just this basic wide pin down action here for Powell. So you're going to see just a, a Ibaka setting a big wide pin down. Powell's going to catch, turn the corner, blow by Tatum for an easy layup. Another thing I took note of when watching the game film was Fred Van Vliet did more relocating, so they had a little more better ball movement. He would pass and then relocate a little bit quicker, was able to attack a couple of closeouts, one here from Kemba to make the easy pull-up, uh, just being able to pass and relocate. And this was kind of a theme uh, going forward for Van Vliet where he would give it up and then relocate and get it right back. And that's important versus Celtics defense. That's very good when it's set. The Raptors defense still wasn't doing a great job on the double fist or 11 ball screen the Celtics run. They would switch the first one okay, uh, but they weren't doing a great job in terms of like getting over the second screen and really fighting through it. They blew a couple of opportunities to defend that. Uh, one of the things I noticed just their the switching wasn't as crisp and they got caught on the second screen a lot more. So look for the adjustment of that going forward. The Raptors made a change to their zone defense, putting OG and Nobi in the middle of the zone. Uh, sometimes they put Siakam, but for the most part it was OG. And then when they set this ball screen, they would have a wing player uh, take the ball screen initially. So you see Ibaka would be in charge of the ball screen coverage. The reason for that change was if OG took the ball screen in the middle, what would happen was is the weak side would be so wide open and they'd be playing an easy two-on-one as we see T Tatum throw a great hook pass to start in the opposite corner, leaving that corner wide open. The Celtics didn't run any crazy specials against the zone. Six possessions ended up with three points and one turnover. So again, not a great output and performance from the Celtics against the zone. Raptors found great success. And moving forward, we'll see a little bit more tweaking from Brad Stevens. The Celtics trying to get Kemba going. Set this side ball screen where they emptied one side of the floor. And set a side ball screen for him. Comes off against Ibaka this first time. Baca in drop coverage, Kemba gets a clean look from three, ends up knocking it down, putting the Celtics up six with about two minutes left. The next possession, they run the same exact thing as you can see Tice signaling that. Here we can see Nick Nurse adjusting and showing Ibaka probably their trap or their higher signal. You can see him putting his hands together. This means Ibaka now instead of in drop coverage is going to be higher. He's not allowed to pull up three. Kemba gets downhill, a little bit of a scramble, and forcing Kemba to get downhill made the Celtics have a tough three at the end of the possession. Lowry is a really tough defender, especially on Jason Tatum. So what they elected to do was set ball screens using Tatum as the ball screener and basically switch Lowry off of Tatum. So allow Tatum to work a little bit easier, uh, you know, not have a, a guard who is extremely physical and tough and is going to pressure him. Uh, you know, in this scenario, they actually uh, go for go for Davis here. But for the most part, they would look to go just that one four ball screen to get Lowry off Tatum. And of course, this is the infamous Marcus Smart three-point shooting game. Uh, I did a game two breakdown on my YouTube channel that's linked below if you want to look at the exact reasons of why Smart hit those threes and why the Celtics were able to pull away in this one. I'm not going to talk about that all in this one breakdown. Tatum in game two was absolutely masterful. Uh, he did an amazing job, especially in the ball screen. He ended up with 34 points, eight rebounds, six assists. Uh, his ability to attack downhill uh, both Ibaka and Gasol, but also showing patience and drawing fouls was extremely impressive. Um, his ability to kind of control the game from a ball screen standpoint 
was a big part of why the Celtics won game two. And it's a big part of why moving forward, the Raptors kind of had to tweak and, and change some things to try and slow him down, slow Kemba down, and you know adjust their ball screen coverage. But Tatum's ability to just get out, especially in transition, you know, he, he was great as a trail man this game, hitting two trail threes. And getting those clean looks against the best transition defense in the NBA is, is extremely important. His look off three was awesome, how he manipulated the defense. You can see him starting to figure some things out, using his eyes as a weapon. It was just great to see him st make that step in game two. Now this is what we call foreshadowing. Raptors down three with a minute left. They go to their pistol hammer set, uh, which we will see come up in the series as a theme. The play starts off with a pass to Siakam on the wing. Siakam hands it back to Lowry, so it's just a little side handoff. Tatum and Brown should be automatically switching here. Brown's late on the switch. He ends up fouling Lowry, so they don't even get to the hammer action on the weak side. The Raptors won game three. Some call it lucky. I would be one of those people. The Celtics pretty much outplayed them the whole game, but the Raptors made the necessary adjustments and the necessary shots to get this series back to 2-1 and then eventually 2-2. Now, I also broke this game down as well. That link will be in the description. The first play of the game was pretty clever from the Raptors. They run this pin down and a dribble handoff for Lowry. Lowry comes off a ball screen from Gasol. He's able to turn the corner, get fouled, draw the end one. Now, the whole point of this play is to have Lowry come off of this pin down and a dribble handoff and get Tatum off of him. So you can see the switch here by Tatum and Kemba Walker. Now, Walker and Tice are in ball screen defense, not Tatum and Tice, so the length isn't there to bother Lowry. So getting Tatum off Lowry is extremely important. When the Raptors went to this set again, we're going to see the adjustment here. Kemba is going to ice it, so he's going to force this to the sideline with Tice in drop coverage. Tatum zoning up. They find Gasol, who misses the three. Another way the Raptors would try to attack Kemba would be setting this wide pin down for Siakam using Van Vliet as the screener. They actually didn't get Kemba in the screening action, and we'll talk about why. But essentially, it's just a flip back from Van Vliet to Lowry, a little touch action. Van Vliet's going to set this wide pin down for Siakam, so you get this guard setting a pin down for Siakam. Two go with Siakam, Van Vliet's open on the open up. But the reason they didn't get Kemba involved is because of this little touch action that allowed Kemba to switch onto Lowry. So when they run it next time, they have no touch action. They just have Van Vliet go directly into that pin down. So now they're putting Kemba in that action. Siakam comes off of it, attacks against Kemba downhill. Van Vliet attacks a closeout and gets fouled. The Raptors still found success with their horns flex action. We can see Lowry is wide open here off the flex screen. Gasol ends up not passing it to him. They go dribble handoff for Van Vliet. Tice switches on to Van Vliet, and although he doesn't attack it, Lowry attacks with no big to help for rim protection and finishes the layup. This action here, we're going to see the first flex screen is going to be you know jammed but fouled. The next example, we're going to see the same action, except for instead of OG catching the ball, Serge is going to throw a really bad pass. He might have been open on this flash here, though. The Celtics did an okay job defending this action at times. We're going to see them stay attached and kind of jam it. Um, Smart does a really good job here in this scenario. We're going to see him stay with Lowry as he cuts through. Smart's going to kind of jam up and deny. Williams is going to stay attached and kind of fight through so they don't get clogged up and congested here. And then Gasol likes to go back to the opposite side, seeing it's not open, forces the Raptors into a tough offensive possession. The Raptors went to their sideline out of bounds with an exit screen uh, that they haven't run in the first two games in game three. So you can see on the baseline exit screen here, we're going to see Jalen Brown jump out on the switch. Now the important thing here is, as Van Vliet comes off of this, we're going to see Kemba is going to switch on the Siakam. So the adjustment here uh, will be shown in a little bit, but as Gasol opens up here, we're going to see him hand it back to Lowry. So go right back into a hand back. They have a keep option as well that they don't really use that much. Uh, Van Vliet comes off that pin down. Brown jumps out, and now we have a switch. So we have Kemba Walker, who's defending Siakam in the post. Siakam didn't do a great job of attacking him this series, uh, but this possession he ends up doing a good job getting inside, scoring a layup. The reason the Celtics switched this is because the, in game two, we're going to see Boucher is the screener here, so they are allowed to switch this action with no consequences. So putting Siakam as the pin down screen is a good adjustment, gets him a bucket. One of the interesting things was Stevens put in Cantor 
uh, in the third quarter, thinking the Raptors are going to play zone, and Cantor's a pretty good offensive rebounder. Uh, but one thing he's not good at is defending the ball screen, and the Raptors exploited that a lot. They ran five straight possessions of ball screen, uh, scoring four of those times, and just basically doing whatever they wanted to, getting their offensive rhythm back when Cantor was in the game. So not a great adjustment by Brad Stevens, but the Raptors sure were happy about it. The Celtics still didn't adjust to the wide pin down action. They still trailed it and they got scored on twice. Raptors only ran this action twice, but it's still been effective. Celtics didn't do anything really differently against it. So we're going to see them go into a ball screen here and get the roll. So see if they uh, change up that going forward. The one thing they did change up was how they defended this strong Boston action. If you remember uh, back in game one, we looked at this action and we saw Van Vliet come off of this uh, you know, curl into a pin down and Van Vliet came off pretty much allowed to kind of catch and shoot a clean look. Uh, you know, uh, okay contest, but they didn't really defend it that great. Well, the way the Celtics switched it up was literally to switch it up. They would have the first player sagging. So Tatum in this scenario was gonna switch with Wanamaker and basically top lock it and take it completely out of the Raptors offense. The Celtics have also taken the Raptors out of their favorite side on a bounds play, their Spain action. I want you to listen as Marcus Smart calls out the play and then the coaches tell them that the stack is coming. So Brown picks up his first. So you can hear the staff yelling out stack, 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 signaling that's the Spain action, what I call Spain action. And that means Tice needs to get out and hard hedge and basically almost trap this ball screen. The reason he traps it is because now Lowry, who should set a back screen on him, doesn't have anybody to screen. The great adjustment here is it takes the Raptors out of their favorite sound out of bounds play and a sound out of bounds play that I have like a six and a half minute edit of, which is really abnormal for an edit. So it's a good adjustment and something that they also did in the half court as well. So you'll see them run uh, the Spain action out of chin. So you'll see Williams come up here and trap it. So there's nobody to set a back screen on and just do a good job of taking the best plays away from the Raptors. We talked about the 11 double fist screen, and we're going to see the Raptors are going to change up their ice coverage on the ball screen instead of switching it so they don't even allow the Celtics to use the ball screen. Goes into a spread ball screen. Gasol's obviously higher, ends up being a turnover on the roll here, so a good adjustment to ice that ball screen. The Raptors also made a change in their ball screen coverage, essentially trapping Kemba or Tatum. And what they'll do is allow the roll man to be open. So you'll see Tice have this open roll here and they'll allow him to shoot that mid-range jumper all day. But essentially it was either trap Kemba or trap Tatum and force anybody else to make a play. This adjustment was really effective in my opinion because it took those guys out of their comfort zone. And although the Celtics you know, are still a talented team, it really made other players beat you. And if you have Williams and Tice setting those ball screens, it, you know, it's, they're not the best playmakers out of the ball screen, so it didn't have too much of an impact on the Raptors ball screen defense. Another way that the Raptors basically took Gasol and Ibaka out of the ball screen was just to avoid the ball screen with switches. So switching, you know, Siakam first and then switching this Siakam action second, it took the Celtics out of their rhythm and flow. Here we see Tatum's force into a late clock ISO in which he throws up a prayer uh, at a critical moment in the game, not allowing the Celtics to score and, and you know, add to their, their lead. Another way that the Celtics countered this was to have, uh, you know, multiple kind of curl actions. Siakam's playing above, gets caught. You know, with Jalen Brown catching it and attacking, wasn't able to take advantage of this situation, but a good counter by the Celtics. We also get the first sighting of an exotic zone. So we get a triangle and two on Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum with the three players in a triangle helping off and then adjusting as the offense kind of runs their, their whatever they're running. Um, the basis of this is just to take basically Tatum and Brown out, especially when you have smart Tyson Williams on the floor. Um, you know, three other players who aren't great at, you know, creating their own shot or you know doing different things in that scenario so here we get a triangle two on Kemba and Tatum forcing Cantor Williams and Wanamaker to make a play so great adjustment by Nurse to basically force the other Celtics to beat you uh, which they did not do the counter that the Celtics had against this was to run a horns ball screen so you're gonna see put the two players who are denied in the corner and then have the other two players set the ball screen. So, you know, Smart gets a good look from three here. Lowry does a good job closing out, ends up hitting the shot anyway. Another way to combat 
the triangle into defense as you can see uh, Lowry calling out triangle there with the hand signal triangle is to have whichever one of the players is denied uh, so in this case it would be Tatum so they're doing it on Tatum and, and Kemba Walker just have Tatum to isolate at the elbow the whole point of a triangle into defense is to take those two players out of the game uh, what I didn't like about the Raptors execution here is they just allowed Tatum to catch the ball one of the players that you're not supposed to have him catch the ball or touch the ball um, he, you know he gets it and then is able to isolate at the elbow which is still probably an advantage for the Celtics the Celtics wanted to get Kemba Walker going early and they used this overrun dribble handoff to counter the pressure of the Raptors so he would run past the dribble handoff then come back for a handoff I broke this down uh, a lot more detailed in the game three breakdown but wanted to show it here as well a good counter to the pressure of the Raptors they ran the double fist action extremely effective still um, you know they would hunt Ibaka and you know not be satisfied with whoever's in the ball screen you can see them go into a step up here at the very end after the double fist pretty much making a priority to put Ibaka and Gasol in the ball screen. Um, the double fist action was extremely effective for the Celtics as Kemba kind of was still, you know, having his way, especially getting downhill against Gasol and Ibaka. Those guys can handle him guarding, you know, going downhill. You can see them being ultra aggressive here. Kemba still, you know, attacking it. They go into a spread ball screen. They just keep going and keep allowing him to get downhill. Even when the traps, um, you know, occurred, it just didn't matter. But Kemba and Tatum were extremely effective, and so in the first half, when you're when you're recognizing that um, as a coach, you want to try to get out of those scenarios as much as possible. That leads to the triangle, into it leads to the zone defense. It leads to you know switching things up even more, and you know trapping was pretty effective. Uh, one of the things that was interesting against the trap is the roll man actually was pretty effective against it. They found a cutter back door. Um, they found you know a couple of different early kickout scenarios that you know was allowed to you know find open shooters which i thought was interesting you know tice is actually a pretty good passer um and, you know, i thought he did a good job handling those trap situations but definitely something to see how they handle in the future and of course the last play uh, in regulation before the buzzer beater was the kemba driving dish first that trap you don't win many games giving up 24 second chance points and that's exactly what happened in game four uh the raptors did a really good job crashing the glass the celtics honestly their defensive effort on the glass was pretty bad um, giving up 24 second chance points you you don't win hardly any games I don't have any stats on you know the record when you give up more than 20 second chance points but I would venture to say you don't win a lot of games uh, doing that so one of the key adjustments moving forward from this game was to just the Celtics get more rebounds that would be the, the best adjustment go go into the locker room and say guys rebound the ball better uh, but ultimately uh, Ibaka had more success against the pick and pop so you see it against the ice coverage uh, Lowry does a good job attacking and, and, and drawing two and finding Ibaka on the pick and pop one of the things I really loved is you know he had the ability to pick and pop but you know it wasn't really like they're running a lot of plays for him and the pick and pop you know swings the extras the Celtics just weren't as connected as they have been uh, but once Ibaka hits a couple of pick and pops we can see him setting this wide pin and then opening up so this is a design set for him uh, after a timeout catching Tice sleeping which I love from from Nick Nurse um, a new set that they ran with a little guard to guard ball screen that I absolutely love I've never seen them run anything like this before but essentially it is to get Kemba in a step up ball screen with a Van Vliet Lowry pick and roll uh, pretty creative so we'll go back and look exactly how this was run um, it's a little bit of kind of dummy action and we call that you know fake action before the initial action so Lowry's going to come off this like double baseline screen almost a little handoff from Van Vliet with Kemba switching on Van Vliet on this strong side then we get a pass to Lowry a little bit of ball movement Van Vliet's going to sprint up into this step up or you know side ball screen for Lowry Lowry attacks Kemba gets downhill draws the defense finds Ibaka for the easy finish Another new set that they ran was uh, start off with like an elevator look. That's just kind of fake action. An Iverson cut for Lowry with a back screen. So Siakam setting this little back screen for Lowry. Maybe looking for off you know a quick one off that. You can see Jalen Brown does a good job defending the back screen hands up, but this gets him out of position. So when Van Vliet sets the pin down, he's late on it. Gets Siakam a really clean look from three, and he just ends up missing it. 
Another new set was this horn set where Lowry would set this back screen then come into a dribble handoff. Tatum does a good job running him off of that. Uh, Lowry ends up just missing the three. But you can see Nick Nurse and his offensive sets were, were extremely effective in terms of creating an advantage for the offense after a timeout. Against the Celtics ice or drop coverage, we'll see Van Vliet, Lowry, and, and some of the guards in the Raptors get really clean looks off this. Uh, and as a coach, you just have to be kind of nervous about you know giving them this clean a look. Um, you know, the guards of the Celtics weren't staying as attached as they should have been. Um, it just was way too clean looks for my own personal liking. A new set that we see is with at the elbow is just elbow scissor action where you see guard screen for the other guard. Lowry gets another clean look off of that, you know, great action. We talked about that strong or stagger baseline bounds at a critical moment in the game here. Lowry gets wide open look off of that stagger screen. Tatum isn't able to stay attached on that. Now this is a really fun adjustment for me. We talked about the uh, you know stack or Spain action and how the Celtics take them out of that, especially side out of bounds, but nobody to back screen uh, from game three. So now we'll see the game four adjustment from the Raptors where they run their side out of bounds, normal Spain action. Lowry would be the back screener in this scenario. He's gonna not go inside the back screen. He's gonna exit out to the wing. So when the trap occurs, they don't set a back screen anymore. They empty it out. So when Gasol is hit on the roll here, they're playing four on three and have the clear advantage. Just such a cool adjustment and a great tweak to an already great set. We talked about the Celtics getting burned on the horn flex action. Here we're going to see a smart adjustment by Marcus Smart where he's going to sag off in the lane as his flex screen's being set. We're going to see him sag off of OG and basically blow that action up. Lowry is going to be top locked. They completely take the Raptors out of what they're looking for. Now I can't say for sure if this is by design or not, but going small to start the fourth quarter uh, takes away this Van Vliet and Siakam pin down. So you can see normally it would be like a guard in that scenario, but if Marcus Smart and Jason Tatum are in there, they both can switch on a Siakam and not worry about having the mismatch. Obviously you don't know for sure, but that seems like a great coaching move if it is. Now we finally get an adjustment from the Celtics on that wide pin down action that we talked about in the you know, previous two games. We see Ibaka setting this pin down. Jalen Brown's going to go under it and beat the curl since Powell likes to curl that action and basically nullify any advantage from that. Now we looked at that pistol hammer set before and it worked. Here we're going to see an example of where it doesn't work, where Tatum does a good job of jamming and denying Lowry off of that handoff, forcing the action to go into a Van Vliet handoff, little roll, and then a contested kick out from OG and Anobi. We talked about the Raptors guarding the double fist action with switching the first and then forcing Kemba into that second ball screen and kind of take him out of that action, uh, a true double fist. The way the Celtics countered that was to have Smart or whoever set in the first ball screen sprint up and set it on the side, creating a late switch or a late hedge and it still allowed Kemba to get downhill easier. So any, any sort of quicker first screen doesn't allow the switch that allowed Kemba to get downhill. And now we get our other junk defense or other creative defense a box and one they went to this action on Tatum when Tatum was really hurting them uh, especially in the fourth quarter when they had the small ball lineup with Williams at the five uh, where they kind of would switch everything stay in the box and it'd be able to adjust a little bit easier it caused some problems for them uh, when Tatum was unable to take advantage and Jalen Brown wasn't really uh, as aggressive as he should have been. Of course, this was the game that Jalen Brown didn't play very well, so it makes sense that they would go to this action, especially in the small ball. With Kemba out on the floor, uh, they tended to more load to his side and you know force him you know to, to see a crowd. So it was similar to a triangle and two, but ultimately the box and one, the uh, of course famous box and one that Nurse pulled out in finals last year. This is where we get into some zone sets. It's a little bit hard to see at first, but the Raptors are in a two-three zone based on bounds. The Celtics overload on the weak side, setting this kind of baseline screen, and then flashing to the middle. This holds Gasol and allows Williams to get an open look easily off baseline out of bounds. And then when the Raptors go to their 2-1-2 zone, we're going to see a little ball screen from Jalen Brown. Williams in the high post is going to slip into the lane. This decoy action creates an easy open dunk for Williams. And then the next possession, because they run the same action, we're going to see Williams slip in a lane. Gasol is going to help off the corner. Smart ends up firing it to the corner. Williams ends up just missing the three. Great action versus zone. Another ball screen action is going to be some, some kind of dummy action after timeout. Smart runs the baseline. We hit Tatum. 
Then we're going to see a flash from Robert Williams into a ball screen. As he sprints into the ball screen, he draws two Raptors players with him. Semi-45 cuts for an easy open layup. Great play design versus zone. Then next, we're going to see a special after timeout that was never run before, where you look at pistol down, where they basically take the weak side help away for an easy face cut the first time. The next possession, we're going to get Tatum off the pin down, which was the actual set they're looking for. He sidestep dribbles and knocks down the easy three. This wouldn't be a true game four breakdown without talking about Lowry and how awesome he was defensively. He was everywhere for the Raptors. He was helping out on the post. He was taking charges. He was having active hands. He just seemed to be everywhere on every possession. Uh, just a great overall effort and just awesome intensity from him every possession. Um, it just seemed as if he, he had to will those guys at times defensively. Um, and he just did a fantastic job. And it was just one of my favorite performances of his. You know, he's guarding Tice in this scenario. You know, he just was able to do it all and just didn't matter, uh, you know, who he was guarding or, or what he was supposed to do. He just, he just figured out a way to make it happen. With the series tied at 2-2, now it's game five time. And uh, the Celtics kind of blasted the Raptors in this game. Uh, it really wasn't even close. And, uh, you know, the Celtics defense was absolutely outstanding, which we'll touch on in a little bit. It was adjustment time for the Celtics, and they adjusted really well, uh, countering some of the switching and, and, and actions with a slip here from Tatum. You can see him slipping that in for an easy layup. He ended up just missing it. One of the things I loved after timeout coming out to start the second quarter was how they controlled where the help comes from and uh, took advantage of Brown hitting a couple of early shots. They isolated Tatum at the elbow and then set like kind of like a wide pin on the opposite side, really nothing action. And then Tatum turned and drove towards his right, knowing Siakam would help, kicked it right to Brown for an easy three. Another action versus the Raptors switching is what I call short. So as Tatum sets the ball screen, it gets Lowry switched onto him. They short it with Tice. Tatum seals Lowry, ends up missing the layup, but great action nonetheless. The double fist action that we've talked you know, a lot about in this breakdown, it was working again for Kemba. For some reason, the Raptors decided not to be as aggressive with it. Um, when they switched, Kemba was able to just blow by Siakam and get downhill several times. Um, Gasol and Ibaka both really kind of struggled guarding it. Kemba did a good job finding space. We get a couple more of the horns action versus the triangle and two. So when the triangle and two occurs, they go to horns, and they can also run this against man or zone. So, you know, it's a good adjustment to have. But what this horns did versus the triangle and two was basically just create so much havoc and get the easiest open look you could get from three. A new wrinkle selling out of bounds was this uh, elbow set with the ball screen. Here, the first one, we would see the ball screen from Williams. Smart rejects it and then beats Siakam and scores easily. The next example we're going to see versus the small ball. The small ball lineup from the Raptors first appeared in this game. So we're going to see uh, Smart come off this. Siakam switches onto him. Tice is able to seal him on the high side with no help and finish easily. We get our first kind of zone special that I really like against their 2-1-2 zone um, where they create an overload look. So you're going to see the players kind of pass and then fill an overload. And all this does is create gaps and scoring angles for the offense. So what it's supposed to do is kind of send two or three players through on the same side. And what that does is it creates two or three players from the Raptors are going to have to adjust. And what it pulls a big out to the wing and it kind of creates a matchup problem you can kind of control who you're going to attack when you run this action so if you're trying to pull Ibaka trying to pull Siakam out you just run it towards their side and now you create a natural overload and it's easier to score now it wasn't for lack of trying uh, you know Nick Nurse tries everything he's, he's been known to do that they ran a 2-2-1 press um, you know, in third quarter, down 20, just try to find a spark in you know, their small ball lineup. Maybe they can get some easy buckets, cut it to 15, you know, cut it to 10 by the time the four starts. Uh, just trying to create some, you know, easier scoring opportunities and just create some confusion, frankly. Um, the 2 2 1 wasn't really as impactful as it has been in the past. The Celtics kind of were prepared for it, did a good job handling it. By the time they really had any success with it, the game was pretty much out of reach. Um, but yeah, it, it just, Nurse tries everything, and you could see him doing that and going through his progressions. I think this game they tried uh, more 2 to one than I've seen in the past. They ran about eight to nine possessions of it in the fourth quarter, just trying to cut the lead, and uh, it just wasn't successful. I do like this after timeout corner set. Um, they ran this a couple times in the regular season, but you'll see 
Uh, a pass to the big in the corner, and then a fill from the weak side. So in this scenario, Powell is going to come off this kind of like corner pin down or baseline exit screen. Williams is out of position for help here, but his length is actually able to allow him to recover, which was uh, pretty interesting to see. You know, he makes some simple mistakes, but he makes up for it really well. The Raptors ran their elbow X action with the first time Kemba being picked off. Here we see Nurse actually calling the play call. We call it X, so he would just call it X. You uh, pass it to Gasol in the middle, and then the two guards screen for each other. So the first time Kemba got picked off on it, the next time the Raptors went to it, we're going to see Smart and Kemba switch it. So Kemba's going to take Lowry, Smart's going to take Van Vliet, and they nullify that action completely. The Another adjustment they made was off of their chin Spain action. So they adjusted to their Spain action style out of bounds. This time we're going to get, instead of a back screen from Van Vliet, he's going to fill to the opposite corner, just a shallow cut. I love Wanamaker's IQ here as he switches and helps onto Ibaka. So it basically takes away any advantage they have from that shallow action. And they can test a three on the weak side. The biggest adjustment that allowed the Celtics defense to succeed was their basically ice to switch defense. It nullifies anything Ibaka brings with their pick and pop action. It does have a guard on a big, so a big switches onto a guard, but they were okay living with that as long as they didn't give up a pick and pop three. So the biggest thing that we looked at, obviously, was Ibaka hurting them from pick and pop three. Um, you know, they loaded the ball in ISO. As long as they can get a good contest and they're not getting blown by, it's a good adjustment to make, and it really worked well. You know, Tice was able to contain Lowry and Van Vliet. Williams struggled with it because he's undisciplined, so Lowry can use some of his tricks. But this adjustment really, really helped them win game five, holding the Raptors to 11 first quarter points. Game six was such a thrilling game. Double overtime. It was awesome to watch. Both teams playing small ball down the stretch. Not a ton of adjustments in this game since both teams kind of are who they were and the Raptors played a lot of box and one. So look at some of those box and one sets. But just a great game. And I broke this game down in the coach's cut uh, with you know the last basically 20 minutes of the game going in depth as possible because it was just so great to see. We talk about how the Celtics couldn't guard the flex action very well. So Nurse opened up the game with this little flex special using Van Vliet as the cross screener, putting Kemba in the cross screen. He kind of hits Jalen Brown here, and that gets Siakam to the free throw line where maybe he can build confidence leaning into this game. They also ran this action out of like delay where you see Lowry set in that flex screen now. Now Smart and Tatum are going to switch this. Van Vliet's going to notice that they're switching. He's going to screen his own man, Kemba, and that leads Tatum to close out and then foul Lowry on the three and one. Another after timeout special was using a ball screen with a cross screen. Lowry setting the cross screen this time. Siakam is uh, unable to finish this here, but the reason that this wasn't as open as it could be is because Kemba is in the corner guarding Powell, a little tweak on the matchups after timeout so they don't put Kemba in the cross screen again. In the second quarter, the game could have got out of hand. The Raptors were able to find Ibaka in transition two separate times. You can see Lowry probing here, finding Ibaka on the trail for the three. And then the next possession, Siakam definitely looking for Ibaka on the trail here. He hits another three. Then after a timeout, after he just hit two threes in a row, Nurse draws up this action where we post up Siakam and then have Lowry, who is guarded by Kemba, set the pin down on Tice. So Lowry pins for Ibaka. Tice runs through Lowry, probably flops a little bit. Ibaka hits the three, and Lowry goes to the free throw line. Great action after a timeout. We saw the Celtics were switching and you know doing a lot of ice to switching with bigs on the guards. This is more of an emphasis than an adjustment where the guards get downhill a little bit easier and kind of attack the bigs downhill versus just settling and letting them switch. Van Vliet and Lowry did a great job of getting downhill and finishing at the rim. Powell does a good job here good tweak to their you know normal attacking after van vliet hit three free throws they go to the pistol hammer set for him and i'm not sure what the celtics are doing here as kemba and williams are just completely confused van vliet gets a wide open look off the hammer which is their favorite play and just really bad defense now expecting the ice to switch action, you see Lowry end up probing a little bit more, was attacking with a little more confidence knowing that, you know, that's the defense is going to do. Didn't really catch him off guard anymore, so you could see him getting downhill, you know, attacking more, using his body, you know, trying to basically force a foul on the big. Uh, in this scenario, he ends up getting downhill, turn, it's a nice turnaround pull-up jumper. They're in small ball, so it's a little bit easier for him to play with, you know, more confidence. Since the double fist action was hurting the Raptors a lot, they decided to go to ice ball screen coverage against it. 
the Celtics automatic counter is to flare the first ball screener with the second ball screener. So basically create another advantage just going off a of flare screen. This is something they've done throughout the regular season, so it's nothing new. They've seen the ice coverage before, so they'll flare Tatum in this scenario. Lowry attacks, extra pass, easy three, great adjustment. And then also versus the ice, in this scenario, we're going to see uh, Smart is going to attack real quick, right? Siakam's forcing him to the sideline. Smart attacks, hits Tice on the dive roll. The next possession, they're going to get a similar coverage. Kemba's going to attack. Tice is now being helped on by Lowry, so Kemba finds Brown for the driving kick three, ends up just missing it with a good closeout. Again, Kemba attacks here, he's going to get a rescreen, so you see this kind of rescreen spread ball screen action, attack a Baca. now Brown's able to make the three. Now I mentioned the box and one against Kemba. They ran the box and one 20 possessions, which is an insane number to think about. Um, you know, basically just take trying to take Kemba out of the game completely. You know, they, with their small ball lineup, they didn't. They were able to switch more. But the Celtics did a good job kind of figuring out ways to attack the box in one. We'll look at that more in game seven. But, you know, being, being able to basically just kind of create natural overloads, create the advantage you want. So here, Ibaka is on Brown. So they get it back to him. He's able to attack him in isolation one-on-one -on -one downhill. And then another way they did it was they run like an overload or some of their basic zone action against the box in one. It didn't really matter. Um, you know what defense they were in they would run this overload action because they're taking away the help you know from inside the paints so here we see Ibaka on smart and then they'll throw side ball screen action with Kemba as the ball screener so you can see smart rejects it kicks Wanamaker finds you know open open shot the next action they run this exact same side ball screen with Tatum Tatum comes off it he's able to find smart in the opposite corner for a corner three so they started to figure some things out in this game and this leads us into game seven 3-3, Celtics-Raptors, the culmination of an amazing series, and of course, the Celtics end up winning it. The Raptors opened up the game with a pretty clever counter to their normal, you know, hook Knicks ball screen. Uh, so we looked at the regular one. You see Gasol opens up here. He's going to pass it to Lowry, and now we're going to get a guard-guard ball screen, similar to that new set we talked about in Game 5, and get Kemba in a ball screen. Kemba kind of gets knocked over and Lowry starts the game with a three. The same exact ball screen special that I mentioned, we run for Van Vliet and Lowry again in the fourth quarter. This time Jalen Brown's on Van Vliet, so he's able to switch. Lowry takes a pretty tough fading three. And the reason for this was this initial handoff actually took Kemba off of Van Vliet. So the handoff here has Kemba on Powell now. So when they go and set the ball screen to the other side, it's now Jalen Brown and they can just switch it. I like this elbow rip dribble handoff set. Uh, you see the Iverson cut by Powell, a pass to Gasol, and now Lowry sets the back screen and goes into a dribble handoff. Uh, he's able to get down and the little pull up ends up just missing. What I love about this is it's a combination of this horns rip dribble handoff that we looked at, as well as the Iverson AI rip set. So it combined both of those to go into the one set. So it kind of is, is a good after timeout counter because it disguises what you're really trying to do. A newer set that the Raptors ran in this series is this little weave action, especially later in the fourth quarter, two minutes left in the game when the Celtics were small. Lowry is able to turn the corner on Williams and get downhill. Now they substituted Tyson to the game with five fouls. Lowry is able to turn the corner and get him his fifth foul and going to the free throw line, cutting the lead to two. Now, what I love, this is really cool, against Celtics zone, three players for Raptors are all in one corner. You see Nurse guiding and telling Powell that he's going to be the player coming off the screen. So normally Van Vliet's going to set this pin down for Powell. He ends up slipping into the middle of the zone wide open, ends up hitting an easy jump shot, great adjustment, and kind of tweaking in-game by Nurse. Now, we talked about that strong Boston action where you switch it. So you see Brown's going to switch here with Kemba. Now, Jalen Brown's going to go underneath this second screen. And what I love to watch is the coach's reaction. So watch the Celtics bench here. When he goes under this screen, they get so nervous and a little bit upset because that's not what you're supposed to do. You leave Van Vliet open for a three. And although Van Vliet wasn't open off the ball screen, Gasol did get open on the roll and got fouled. Now, another counter to the Chin Spain counter that the Celtics are going to have is to get the correct players in the ball screen defense. So we see a switch 
from Kemba and Semi. And then we're going to get another switch from Smart and Semi onto Van Vliet, switching that Spain action. Then we get an off-ball switch from Tatum and Kemba, and it basically nullifies any of the initial action. The reason is they put Williams on Siakam after the timeout. So Williams is on Siakam, so now when they go to this ball screen action, Williams is off the ball. An issue with that is there's no rim protection, and he's helping in the corner, so Lowry's able to get downhill and make a layup. So it kind of works both ways. Now, against the box and one, the Celtics run this blind pig action, or they throw it to Daniel Tice, who looks for a handoff for Kemba. The handoff is initially not there, and the Raptors do a good job kind of containing this. It's going to flow into a side dribble handoff for Smart, and because they're so worried about Kemba, it turns into like the snake and seal action they run. Jalen Brown gets an open corner three. Another way they countered the box and one was to have a player cut through like Tatum to the opposite side. Kemba then would screen the low man, so he's screening two people in this scenario because he's screening his own man who's not going to leave him, and screening Gasol. So this creates a natural overload at times, and you'll see what it does is, you know, Jalen Brown misses the three there, but what it does is it allows them to kind of control a matchup. So you see the ball screen at the same time, the pin down screen. So now Gasol and and Van Vliet are going to switch. So now we have Tatum being guarded by Van Vliet, and now Gasol has to worry about, am I still denying Kemba? Am I on Kemba? What am I doing? So now he goes with Kemba, Smart's open in the corner, Kemba drives into space, finds Smart for the open three. Great counter and great action against the box and one. And you see they go against Tatum. He sets that screen into a ball screen. Smart misses the three. One of the things the Raptors did a great job of is avoid switching Gasol at all costs. So they had Siakam in ball screen defense. So anytime they would sprint up for a ball screen, they would just sag and have another player take the ball screen coverage. So here you can see them trying to get Ibaka in the ball screen. Van Vliet stays high. Ibaka goes to Semi. Semi goes up for a ball screen, and Powell sprints up for a ball screen. The ball screen defense to switch it. Ends up a Tatum iso at the end of the quarter. He ends up missing the shot. So they did a great job of avoiding switching the big into the ball screen at all costs. Now, this was not without its consequences. As we can see, Gasol's on smart in this play. So we can see Tatum drive downhill, and now it leaves Lowry and Van Vliet to box out Tice. They do a great job boxing out, but Tice is still just bigger than them, so he gets the rebound. Again, spread ball screen action. Ibaka's on smart now. Tatum looks off Ibaka, finds Tice on the roll. Tice is able to finish through contact. Again, smart is now clearing an opposite. Lowry takes Tice. Tatum is going to get downhill after the slip. Tatum's going to find Brown. Now we have Gasol closing out on Brown. Brown pump fakes and hits the pull-up. Kemba Walker obviously was being guarded with box and one for most of the game. So when they weren't in box and one, the after timeout special is to fake this ball screen and go into veer action and set this pin down for Kemba. Ibaka has sort of sagged off in drop coverage. Kemba comes off, goes one, two, rises and knocks down the three to start the fourth quarter. Another set that they ran in the fourth quarter, uh, when the Raptors went to their small ball action, the Celtics countered it with their small ball action when Tice got five fouls instead of going to Williams. They isolated Tatum at the elbow and a stagger screen on the opposite side and had both players kind of seal and look for maybe slips. That left one-on-one Tatum versus Siakam in isolation. He was able to take advantage of the no rim protection and score the layup. The next possession, we get that same exact action with Tatum isolated at the elbow. This time, he's going to look off OG, and this is really clever. After he gets fouled, we'll show this replay. He's going to look off OG by showing the ball like he might throw a skip pass to the corner. OG recovers, loses sight. Tatum drives and gets contact and goes to the free throw line. A huge part of why I love these series and breaking these down is in game one, we noted a possible after timeout for Tice on the slip. In game seven, they ran it as an after timeout with Tice being wide open on the slip. The play didn't come of anything, you know, it's a turnover at the end of the day, but it's just cool to like note something from game one and then wait, you wait six games and you're like, oh man, they finally used it as an after timeout special, you know, looking to get Tice on the slip against a small ball. Um, it's just, it's just, it's just fun. That's just fun to me as a coach and, and as a fan. Now let's talk about the last play of the series. Everything builds to this exact moment. Raptors down three, 30 seconds left right? We know what they're going to go to. They're going to go to their pistol hammer set. It's been a mixed bag, but the whole season leads to this. 
We see the first play when they match up in the regular season where they switch it and Lowry turns it over. We witnessed it in game two when they run this action, they blew the switch, Lowry gets fouled on the free throw. We saw this action in game four where they jammed it and did a good job taking it away, forcing them into a little you know, contested three. We saw this action in game six where they ran it for Van Vliet for a wide open three and the Celtics completely blew the coverage. So everything goes into this one play for your season. Smart and Brown do a good job communicating and switch this first action. Tatum and Kemba do a good job communicating on the weak side and taking away the hammer action. Now it's one-on-one Van Vliet versus Brown. The idea here is to have Ibaka go up and set a ball screen and get Williams switched onto Van Vliet, which is a good play because Williams is probably their weakest defender out there. This is where the Celtics miss Hayward more than anything else. Williams does a good job switching out on Van Vliet and late in the shot clock moves his feet, active hands, and as Van Vliet rises, he's able to contest, block the shot, and win the series for the Celtics. Thank you so much for watching this breakdown, sticking with it the whole time. I really enjoyed this whole series from a coaching standpoint, adjustments, everything about it was absolutely fantastic. I hope this breakdown did it justice. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to like and subscribe. I look forward to doing more.